Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. We've got a packed show today. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed, live from Los Angeles. I'm Joy Taylor, here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Joy. How are you today? How are you? I'm good. good. How was your weekend? It's you know, so Joy always says hi to me first. I was just pointing that out. <laughs> I just want to it's, 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 She always turns to me first. I don't know why. Okay, well, go ahead. Tell you know, but then you do all your is it my turn? Is it my turn to say hello, Joy? How are you doing? I mean, I was just looking for the mouths and yak. I don't yeah, you, up here today. No, yeah. no. Nah, nah, you know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm drying out. Oh. Yeah, you know, I got something ready. happening about 11 weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm drying out. You're He's, preparing for the postseason fall. No. There ain't going to be no postseason. Fall. How are you, Shannon? I'm big I wasn't low. awake until I saw that jacket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had a little something. It's Woo! spring. It's spring, Skip. Yeah. You know? Spring has sprung. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get started with the Red Hot Sixers. They won a thriller against the Cavs on Friday night, 132 to 130. Ben Simmons led the way with 27 points, 15 rebounds, and 13 assists. The Cavs were down by as many as 30, but came back thanks to LeBron's huge night. He finished with 44 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. But with under two seconds left, down by three, LeBron went to the line for three free throws. He made the first, but missed the second and intentionally missed the third. The Sixers got the win and also beat the Mavs last night for their 14th straight win. Mm. They now have a one-game lead on the Cavs for the third seed in the East. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So Shannon, mm. didn't start your weekend off very well. No, but no, it didn't. It mm. didn't. It How didn't. big of a threat are mm. the Sixers? Uh, in all honesty, I've always felt the Sixers were the bigger, the bigger of the threats in the East for the simple fact no one has an answer for Joel Embiid. And although Joel Embiid did not play, they still are a very dangerous team. Ben Simmons is showing why he's going to be the unanimous rookie of the year. He's, he was phenomenal. Um, he knows what he is. He knows what he isn't. He stays in his wheelhouse. Um, but the problem that, they, that, that a team will face, now, I still, with all that being said, yes, they are a major threat to the Cavaliers. I do not believe they can beat the Cavaliers four times over a two-week span. But, Skip, those two, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons are far more dangerous than Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. Because here's the thing. You almost must double-team Joel Embiid. And the way they're shooting the three-point ball now, Skip, in the beginning of the year, they were not like this shooting the three ball. Now you have J.J. Redick at 40%. You got Bellinelli at almost 40%. Mm-hmm. You got Covington. You got mm-hmm. Saric. You got mm-hmm. Ilasovic. Mm-hmm. So when you come with the double-team, he's going to kick the ball. And they're knocking shots down right now. All that being said, they've never been in this position before. They've never been in the playoff. They've never played mm. in these type moments. So with all that being said, you know who I'm going to go with mm. because I know LeBron James can average 40, 10, and 12 mm. for a series. Can Joel Embiid give you 30 and 20 a night? Mm. Can Ben Simmons average a triple-double a night? Mm. I don't believe they can. Mm. But they are the most, the most serious threat to the Cleveland Cavaliers representing the Eastern Conference again. Hmm. And what if Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals winds up in Philadelphia? What if? I'm going to Vegas and I'm putting yeah. 100 racks. Are I'm you? putting 100 racks on 100 Gron. racks? Yeah. I think Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals is going to be played in Philadelphia. So, we had the Eagles, then we had Villanova, and now it's... Stop trying to speak it into existence. I don't know. It's just like something is going on here to the point that, I must admit, I owe the city of Philadelphia an apology. And I'm serious about this because I've been saying all year long, the Eastern Conference is yet another LeBron James cakewalk to the finals. And I was overlooking that little young team that I thought was a year away in Philadelphia. And I was fixated on those Raptors who shrink at the side of the beast of the East when he steps on the court, Mm -hmm. be it in Toronto or in Cleveland. When LeBron steps on the court, the Raptors are basically done. Mm -hmm. And I was fixated on the decimated Boston Celtics because I gave Kyrie and company a chance. And then Gordon Hayward goes down in game one at, at Cleveland. And now Kyrie is lost for the whole playoffs. So I got too caught up in that, and I didn't see the forest for those two seven-foot trees named Embiid and Ben Simmons. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, wait a second now. If, wait, if Philly finishes it out by winning their last 16 games of the regular season, that means they eclipse LeBron's team for the three seed in the East, and they would have home court advantage in a potential Eastern Conference Finals I, matchup? I don't believe that's going to be the case because I believe the Cavaliers will win tonight in New York, win again 
uh, at home against the Knicks. The Milwaukee, they play the Milwaukee Bucks. See, everybody's but it's in Philly. But here's the thing, Skip. Everybody's trying to position themselves. Everybody really wants to be the seventh seed. They want the Boston Celtics in the first round. So they're trying to stay out of the eighth seed and have to deal with Toronto. So everybody's like positioning, but Milwaukee lose. That means Washington can win, and they would go to the seventh slot. And then here come Milwaukee at the eighth. Milwaukee, all things, you really want to see the Celtics, minus Kyrie, minus Gordon Hayward. So they have something to play for. Okay, but still, it's looking like Philly's going to win out Unless you tell me they're going to lose at Atlanta or lose to the Bucs at home. I just right? said that. The so you, you say the Bucs are going to win yes. at Philadelphia in the last game. Yes. Because why? Because they have more incentive? Be- because here's the thing. They're right in, they're in the seventh slot now. The seven will play the two, which are the Celtics. Yeah. You really want to stay there. They lose. Guess who gets the, in the eighth slot? Okay. The Wizards. So now they go back. The Bucs will go from seven to eight. Now you get Toronto in the first round as opposed to having to play the Celtics minus Kyrie, minus Gordon Hayward. So, wait a second. You're saying if the last game, the 82nd game, is at Philadelphia, that the Sixers are going to say, we give up? We don't really want no, home court advantage no, against LeBron? And no, the no. The I'm final? saying the Milwaukee Bucks are going to win. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I said. Could we have a case of do on that? Because you owe me one from the weekend, but that's okay. You didn't want to bet oh, that one. I did. I took it. I don't know. I, I couldn't believe know. you threw it at no, me. No, no. We got to okay. play the tape on that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I said yes. Okay, yeah. I give okay. it to you. Right, no, you say you didn't want it because they wouldn't have a beat. Well, I'm going to give it back to you. Can we have a bet? Yeah. If both teams win their 81st game, mm-hmm. let's just say that that has to happen first because I don't know, maybe the Sixers go blow one. Atlanta's weird. Atlanta can rise up and win at Utah. Now they just beat some. They, oh, Utah. they just beat. No, they just they beat Utah, but they just beat Boston in Boston. Okay, that's not a big accomplishment at this point. Well, considering Atlanta's tanking, I, no, that's a I, huge okay, accomplishment. Okay, but I'm saying if both win their 81st game, yes. we got a case of do. I got the Sixers at home against Milwaukee in the 82nd game. I'm just going to deal. I'm, I'm saying the Cleveland Cavaliers, when it's all said and done, 81st, 82nd, mm-hmm. the Cavaliers will be in the three seed. Really? So how that happens, I really don't Okay, care. I'll just do that then. Okay. I will bet you that the Sixers wind up with the three seed. Okay. Deal? Good deal. Okay, because the Sixers really impressed me on Friday night, and I didn't even see that coming because clearly right now they're without their best player, Joel Embiid. And even though LeBron and company are playing back-to-back, they had a nice win at home against Washington where they held off thanks to John Wall hitting the wall down the stretch. That's a whole other story. But in this game, they came out just blazing. And all of a sudden I look up and it's 78 to 48 Sixers, 78 to 48 near – that was with a minute 30 left in the first half. But they had 78 first-half points. Mm-hmm against your defense that has now fallen all the way to 29th, second to last in defense efficiency? Well, they've really? been basically 29th the whole year. So well, they, they have like not. They, they have not. They've been 28th, but they just fell to 29th <laughs> past, past Sacramento. They plunged below Sacramento in defensive rating. So, really? Wait, and LeBron is 313th in defensive win shares? That's impossible. LeBron James is 313th? I, I don't know what's happening to your team, but do you still trust that? Are you still good with it? I still trust LeBron and LeBron I trust. Okay. <laughs> so, as young teams are wont to do, especially when they don't have their best player, then the sex, uh, Sixers predictably took their foot off the gas, and all of a sudden, here came LeBron. And he cranked it up, and he was highly impressive through the third and much of the fourth quarter. And they go on a 61-33 to run, and they get it all the way down to two Mm -hmm. with eight minutes left. And guess what? Ben Simmons and J.J. Redick said, no, not in our house. And they went boom, boom, boom. And I got to tell you, Ben Simmons showed me some big-time backbone. That's one of the first times I've seen him under that kind of fire. Remember, he's LeBron's client, so you got to watch that. He's not LeBron, okay. LeBron's client. He, he happens to be represented by the same yeah. corporation. You mean Clutch Sports? Uh, wait, Unclutch Sports? Oh, oh. no. Right? Clutch. They got to rename it now. They I don't got know. big time players. Yeah. LeBron, they got, got Ben Simmons, yeah. mm-hmm. Bledsoe. Yeah, Bledsoe, he's big time. Roy. Yeah. So, <laughs> David Falk had to start somewhere. Ben Simmons is big time, and he showed me a little repertoire in the lane I didn't know that he had. I didn't even know if he could score or not. But he made three or four shots in the lane, a hook shot, a little fall sort away. of fall away shot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't even know he had it. But he showed, you know, he can't shoot a free throw. He can't shoot a three. But he made some big time shots that staved off the run. 
and it took some desperation, big time threes from JR and Jeff Green to suddenly make this a semblance of a game with just a couple seconds left. You know, I was surprised, Skip. I was surprised they didn't employ the hacker Simmons. Mm, they should have, maybe. You, I would be shocked if the games are close mm. late in the ball game. Yep. Some teams does not implore that mm. when they're playing this team. But it goes back, Skip. It's, it's like this: you can't keep digging yourself these type of holes. You came down. You came back from what 17 down mm -hmm. against a. Uh, uh, the, the whiz yep. the night before, mm -hmm. and then here we are again in this very situation. So basically, you're trying, in back-to-back -back nights, you're trying to come back from a combined 47 points. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of, uh, exert a lot of effort. But what happened is that they couldn't, Skip, the ball, they had, they forced a bad shot by the Sixers. The ball lands on the floor. It's between Jetty and LeBron, and both of them take off on the break. Covington gets the ball, kicks it to J.J. Reddick, who splashes the three at the end of the shot clock. That was a that, big shot. That was the type of 11 second chance points mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. Mm. The Cavaliers have won. Mm. I was surprised by, about how bad the Cavaliers got out rebounding, considered ben, uh, uh, Joel and B did not play. Mm. That's what I was really surprised 45 by. 45 to 40, home team. Yes. Guess what? The home team, the Philadelphia 76ers, are the number one rebounding team in all of pro basketball. And obviously that was without their best rebounder right. in Embiid. So we came down to what turned into Hack of LeBron on the last big play. It wasn't no Hack of LeBron. Hack of LeBron. No, it, it was actually, stop it. It was yep. actually a terrible call, but it turned into an unwitting Hack of LeBron. Because I don't know what Lauren Holtkamp was thinking, but, but even LeBron said after the game, I wasn't yet in my shooting motion. I think he hated it that this foul got called because it put him in his worst nightmare. But the call was made on Covington that he hacked LeBron in the shooting motion, which he wasn't in yet. He did. And so he did not. He did. LeBron said he didn't. So I don't care. I'm I going by what LeBron what, said. What, you going to go by what I said. Okay, I'll go by what you said. LeBron was and in then, the moment, so he couldn't see what was actually transpired. And then I turned to Ernestine and I said, uh-oh, LeBron is in his worst nightmare scenario. He's got to go stand alone at the free throw line and face his late game free throw shooting demons because now he's got to make three to tie, not one or two. He's got to make all three just mm -hmm. to tie. Mm -hmm. Well, that's tough for anybody, but especially for LeBron James. And as I've said many, 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 probably too many times, he's got the late game free throw shooting demons. So he did make the first. Way to go, LeBron. And then, predictably, he gagged the second one. Was Shannon Sharp surprised? He was not surprised because he was cringing already, knowing that it was coming. And that forced LeBron to have to intentionally miss the third free throw. So the Sixers have to know that if in Game 7, in their place, if they can just get LeBron at the free throw line needing desperation free throws at the end, they got that because LeBron's not going to make those free throws. Well, here's the thing, Skip. If you're going to tell me that the uh, the Sixers bench will outscore the Cavaliers 56-25 mm. to 25 like they did this time, mm. I'm going to say they're going to lose. Joy, did you notice how he just changed the subject from LeBron's missed free throw? What he did you think, Shannon? Give me some response. How about this? You, you can't just sweep that one under the carpet. Okay, here, here it is. Okay. Skip. He switched the first one. Mm -hmm. The second one rimmed out. Yeah, rimmed you made out. it seem like he shot an air ball. No. That's what you were hoping. I, I was not hoping. Yeah. I just know he misses those every time. He missed them late against the Wizards the night before. No. Missed two big ones late. But but you have seen him make those in those very situations, especially I, I, come playoff rarely, time. Rarely, rarely. In playoff time. Yeah. You remember, you remember game seven? He put it away. He made those? Game seven against, he, against he your made, team. He made two against Oklahoma City yeah. in game two, the turnaround game. Yeah during his first run to his first yeah. ring, right? So, I, look, I want LeBron in this situation. I want the ball in LeBron's hand. I hate that they put themselves in that situation mm. because I thought it was going to be one of those games, you know what, they're down 30, LeBron's going to play like three minutes of the second half, and then he's going to take a seat. And the next thing you know, 26, 28 point, mm -hmm. is now all of a sudden it's down to 15. You're like, oh. Mm. And then you're like, okay, it's down to le oh, oh, eight. Mm. Whoa, whoa, we got seven minutes to go in this. And so... Mm -hmm. fought him, he fought his way back, 19 in the third, 16 in the... He mm. didn't shoot the... He didn't shoot the that, if you want to say anything, if you want to criticize LeBron in one thing about this game, mm -hmm. he did not shoot the free throw rail, well. Mm -hmm. He was 6 of 11. Mm -hmm. That's not good enough. They were not very good as a, as a, as a team. Looking at it, uh, what were they from as a team? 24-33, that's 72%. Mm -hmm. And the Sixers was 18 of uh, 21, 85%. Mm -hmm. There's your difference. Mm. Plus a lot of second chance points in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. So, Skip, I give you that. He did not perform in that moment like I've seen him do so many times mm. before. 
But what you, which is a bigger choke job? Being up 3-1 in the NBA Finals, mm. being up 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals, or missing three free throws to tie the ball game at the end of the game? I just want to know. Mm, I would say it's up two games to one against Dallas in the 2011 Finals when you're making a list of the people you're going to say, I told you Let so. Let me ask you a question. That's, that's the Let biggest choke question. God I've has, ever seen. Has any team ever come mm. back from 2-1 down mm. in the NBA Finals? Mm. Yes, they have. Have any team ever come back from 3-1? Mm. In the NBA Finals. No, they have. have any team ever come back from 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals? As the team that was the victim of that had one of their best players suspended for the pivotal game five. Kevin Durant wasn't mm. suspended. Mm. They were up 3-1 mm. on the Golden State Warriors. Kevin Durant wasn't suspended. And, oh, by the way, we're going to talk about them a little later. How is your best player in the NBA doing, Skip? Hmm. Who? Kevin Durant? Yeah. He is doing phenomenal. That, that I mean, he's just lighting it that's up, That's not man. what their records say. He's been scoring 40 a game. That's not, that's not what their records say. The man whoa, can whoa, whoa, score. Whoa, whoa, whoa. can score. Did you, not, about that. Did you not just see what LeBron did? We're, we're talking you, you about hyping 40 LeBron point games. games. We're talking about the 76ers, so I'm going to keep it right here. And, and I just I'm going to tell credit. you that the reason you should be afraid is that Brett Brown, a Popovich disciple, can mm. really, really coach. He's been there for a while, and mm -hmm. he paid some hard dues when yeah. they were really, really bad going through the process. Yes. And all of a sudden, they're really, really good, and all of a sudden, the Colangelos, the new overseers of this basketball operation, have gone out and gotten some vets who really played key roles against LeBron and company because did you see what Ilya Sova did in the fourth quarter? Oh, yeah, I saw what he did. Oh. Joy, did you see what he did? Did you? What? Hold on. I'm going to tell you something moving forward. Mm -hmm. And this goes back about two weeks. If you're a foreign big man, mm -hmm. if you're from, you from Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. or you're from Lithuania, mm -hmm. or you're from the Ukraine, mm -hmm. if you're a big man, you 16 or above, 16 or above mm -hmm. and you plan on challenging one LeBron James at the rim, mm -hmm. you're getting chalked up. Mm -hmm. So let that be, hey, let mm -hmm. that be a lesson to you. Mm -hmm. So let so it go. Are you saying LeBron's like ugly American? Uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He he and he yeah. he anti-foreign big uh, man. Is he? So he, he okay. body bagging all uh, of them. He's body bagging, except Ilosova was was so okay in the fourth quarter. He had eight points and five rebounds and two assists. Yeah. And he stepped to the free throw line and made the two at the end well, of the well, game the winning free what, throw. What about that first one? He made them both. What about that first one? They hit every part of the rim and bounced in. Did it go in? Yeah, oh see, see you can see why you do that, Skip. Did he you, go to your restaurant after no, the game? Yeah, yes, he, business was open. For you him. you make yeah. it seem like he just switched it, mm. like a Steph Curry. But it you know in. it it did, Skip. It went. But I'm just talking about I'm talking about my guy, LeBron James, mm. in year 15 mm -hmm. is body bagging, mm. folks, like we've yes. never seen before at any point of his career. When you quote unquote body bag a foreign big man, does that mean the game's over and you win? Uh, so that means he body bagged Nurkic and he lost, and he body bagged Ely Sova yeah. and he lost. Yeah, he got That's a bunch interesting. Of, he got some it? other ones too. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. And somehow they bounced right back to life. And Bellinelli. Zombies. Skip, you know what it's like. Bellinelli played nine minutes of the fourth quarter, so there's another veteran, yep. Brett Brown, saying, I'm going to play with my veterans. But the thing is, is that you look. It's not the fact that they were hitting three shots. It was the de degree of difficulty in which they were making those shots. Bellinelli was shooting threes, uh, and J.J. was shooting threes like J.R. Like, uh, Smith. You know those ones he's falling out about? talking about in the first half. Yeah, but yeah, I'm saying. remember, in the fourth quarter, Philly went one for ten from the three-point line, and the one was a J dagger for JJ. JJ. Right, that was the one they had yep. an opportunity to get the ball yep. and possibly tie the game. Mm -hmm. But, Skip, if you're going to tell me Bellinelli and Reddick and all those guys are going to be taking – uh, uh, three-point shots like Jr. Mm. and they're going to be splashing, well, I might have to worry about it. Mm. But I got a guy. Mm. And what I've seen over the last two months, now you say two months is a long stretch. That's a big block of time, Skip mm -hmm. Bayless. He's averaging a triple-double. He just went 44, 11, and 11. Mm -hmm. That's his second 40-point triple-double this season. So I know he's capable of that. Mm. in a seven-game series mm. because we saw him average a triple-double in a five-game mm. series. Mm. We also saw him average 35, 13, and 9 in a six-game mm. series. So I know what this young man is capable of, mm. and so do you. He's 33. So, so be on mm. your best behavior. He's not a young man. Either. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't mm. tell. Yeah. Can you tell? Saturday if night he wished he was 40 because – Ginobili tied Michael Jordan for most double-digit games at age 40 with 29 games. That was Ginobili, who should be the sixth man of the well, year. Well, first of all, LeBron... And I tweeted that, Le sorry, LeBron, you're not 40. So LeBron, sure LeBron was thinking, maybe LeBron, I could do this. LeBron will never know what it's like because huh? LeBron's not going to be huh? playing 40 because huh? by the time LeBron hit 38, when LeBron hit yep. 38, he will be the all-time leader. 
in so, NBA points scored. He will have 45. Here is the bottom line to everything you just said. This is the one team in the NBA, other than Golden State, that ain't afraid of no king. And it amazes me. Joel Embiid ain't afraid of no LeBron. Ben Simmons, we saw Friday night, ain't afraid of no LeBron. No, not in my house. I'm not going to let him do this to us. We're not going to lose a 30-point lead. And Ilya Sova, I don't think he's afraid of any LeBron James. Did I don't. You, now, yeah. now Sarge, yes, because Sarge said two weeks ago, they asked him about, you fear anybody? Yeah, I, I do fear LeBron James in the East. Well, then you're out. And he almost blew the game at the end of the game. How do you not box out Larry Nance Jr. on the last play when LeBron intentionally Well, did? what he tried to do, he tried to step to him, and, and, and Larry Nance pulled the old okie doke well, step. Just, he went wait, come on, you can't let that happen, man. Whoa. He almost lost the game. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, he's all, afraid of LeBron, so I guess. All that would have done yeah. was gotten the game into overtime, mm. which you did not want to happen. Mm. But with that being said, Ila Sova did play be- he did play well in mm-hmm. the fourth. Those eight points and five rebounds Big. because three of those was on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. So give them credit, Skip. They won the ball game. Whew. But uh, you're not you're not going to rest comfortably hmm. knowing that they must play the Cavaliers in order to advance hmm. to the Eastern Conference. Embiid to, to, due back pretty soon. He's already started a little bit of cardio condition. He can come back tomorrow. Yeah. But I know what my huh. guy is capable of doing in the playoffs. Huh. Do we really know what they are capable of doing in the playoffs? Because we have yet to see it. Are you telling me LeBron James is going to body bag Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid in a playoff game? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. He uh, called, I think it he, might be the other oh, way he around. Called, he called Ben. He uh, called, I mean, he called, uh, what you call yeah. it? He called uh, Joel Embiid. Joel, like, I, I was thinking about it. Then I thought better yeah. of it. Remember that March 1st game at Cleveland? Yeah. Where ben Simmons broke free down the lane and LeBron said, I'm out of here. Ben, he broke free a couple of times. Yeah. Huh. Split the double team. The pick and roll is killing us. Mm. Whether it's high pick and roll or side pick and roll, it's killing the Cavaliers. Ooh. They got to be and do a better job. So do you realize that the Sixers have held opponents to the lowest shooting percentage in the entire NBA? That's that's called defense, something yeah. the Cavs don't play? Yeah. Are, are you not? I think you're starting to sweat over there. The Cavaliers shot 51% Oof. from the floor. Oof. They shot 47% from the three. Mm-hmm. It's just they dug themselves such a deep mm. hole, they were unable to get out of it. But come playoff time, what's the likelihood of a team getting down by 30? I don't know. Could happen, and could. they won't be able to climb out of that hole in a playoff Because they won't get down that far. Game seven in Philadelphia. It feels like it just meant to be. 100 sacks, right? Huh? 100 sacks I'm on going, that? If it's a, if it, no, I don't want to talk about 100. I'm right. Racks. Racks? Uh, Racks. How much money do you have? I ain't got but a little bit, yeah. but I'm going to have a lot more when I bet this game <laughs> seven gonna, on LeBron. You're going to borrow it to No, bet it? no, mm. no. Whew. Yeah. That's such a good idea. Mm. It's not, that's not the right way to go into 50. Mm. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, hey, money ain't a thing. <laughs> No, I don't Speaking know. of money, yeah. is Money Mayweather really going yeah. to the UFC? Oh, we'll my discuss goodness. that. Here next. we go. <laughs> no mercy. Floyd Mayweather started the rumors that he would step in the octagon when he said he would train with UFC fighter Tyron Woodley last month. This weekend, Dana White was asked about it and said, quote, the money is right. It's going to happen. I'm very confident. <sighs> oh, Shannon Sharp, it's happening. <laughs> Your man is going to go in the octagon. Shannon, what percentage it? chance do you give Floyd of going to the UFC? Well, when I was drinking milk, I only drunk 2%. Oh. So that's the kind of percentage I'm going to give Florida getting into that. 2%? 2. 2. 2. two. two. Dana says it's I don't going care to what happen. Is. Floyd all but says it's going to happen. This is, now, nah, they, they're, they're, what they're doing is like drumming up, dude, oh, man, Floyd. And they keep just, and, and, and Floyd keeps putting it out there. And Dana's like, you know, last time they said something wasn't going to happen, it ended up happening. It was, it was cosmic. Mm. Um, it sounds like a good idea, Skip. And the thing that made Connor and Floyd so compelling is that, you know, Connor really wanted this fight, but Connor had an, a boxing background. Mm-hmm. So that was the only thing he was going to have to worry about. Yeah was Floyd's fist. Yeah. Floyd does not have a wrestling background. Mm. He doesn't have a jiu-jitsu background mm. or a Muay Thai background. Mm. So he has to worry about other things. See, it's easier to go from MMA to boxing as opposed to going boxing to MMA. Okay. Because there's so many other things. Skip, you got to worry about leg strikes. You got to worry about somebody taking you down. You got to worry about somebody arm barring you and choking the, the daylights out of you. In the boxing ring, you don't have to worry about any of that. 
And remember when Connor would move to the back of Floyd? What did the guy you call Dirty Bird, mm -hmm. <laughs> Robert Bird? What did would, he do? He, he broke it up. He broke it up. Yeah, he broke. That's we got to start over in the middle yeah. of the ring. No, he had him in trouble. <laughs> that's what, what are you doing? Floyd does not have any expertise in any of those. And the thing is, Skip, when you look at fighters that have made multiple title defenses, let's just go back over the past decade in that sport, they're multifaceted. Hmm. You look at Anderson Silva. You look at St. Pierre. You look at Demetrius Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those guys can do other things. What can Floyd do besides box? So what happens he when... He can run. Hmm? <laughs> he can run. They're, they're not on the track. He's a marathon It, do runner, it, it, it's, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, though, Skip. You can't run in the octagon because the referee will deduct points because you have to have the action. So you can't stall. Hmm. So, you know, he has Maybe to fight. Maybe they tweak the rules a little They're bit. They're not going to tweak yeah. no rules. Yeah. They're going to fight by UFC rules. UFC rules. You know what happens when you get into that octagon. Skip, I know How you. How about this? No takedowns. Would you like that? No. Would you do it then? No. No that, takedowns. No. no wrestling. No. I want UFC rules. Mm. UFC rules, you know what they are. Mm. It was just like boxing rules. They made no concessions because Conor McGregor was not a professional boxer. Mm -hmm. They made none. Mm -hmm. So they will make none if Floyd were to go into the UFC. But like you, a lot of people, Joy, will buy this fight because they want to see pain inflicted on Floyd Mayweather. They're not like, oh, they think this is going to be a good fight. They want him to get punished because they don't like because he's arrogant, he's mm -hmm. boastful, he's braggadocious, he's always flaunting his opulence, which I don't have a problem with. And so, <laughs> oh, you, you over here just key, key, key. You think that's funny. That's what you want. You don't, you don't, you have no, you know good well, Skip Bayless. Wait, you don't think Floyd's fans want to see Floyd go on to Connor's turf no. and shut him up? No, because you won't. You don't think they think he's boastful and I'm, arrogant and racist and yeah, all of yeah. the above? I'm, I'm, the, I'm yeah. a Floyd fan. Yeah. But I know Floyd can't beat Conor McGregor in that. You should have more faith in your man. Hand-to-hand -hand combat on his turf, his rules. Shut him up. Yeah, if, if that, Skip, in UFC, UFC is basically like street fighting. Mm -hmm. And, then, you know, when you street fight, don't nobody say, oh, man, that wasn't fair. Anything goes in the street fight. Basically, anything goes in there, Skip. Yep. Except he can't poke in the eye. Okay, he, he can't uh, He can't eye gouge him. Yep. He can't hit him in his crotch, and no. he can't bite him. Okay. Other than that. That's fair. And you, well, you can't, well, you can't knee him in the head when he's on the, and he's on the ground. Okay. Good. So, the 2% is, is what, in your mind's eye, you don't want to have happen. So, you're saying it's 2%. But I think if you step back and be objective about this, You'd say it's 90% it is going to happen. No, you're, I want 100% not for it to happen. Uh, no, that it is going to happen. To me, I was 75-25 pro on this one that it is going to happen yesterday, last night. And then the more I read, the more I hear the quotes, I, I'm because Dana's just flat out saying this is going to happen. And when Dana White says it's going to happen, I'm taking it to the bank. When Floyd all but says it's going, he, he's saying, I'm going to fight in the octagon. I'm going to unretire. He told Jim Gray, why wouldn't I think it's going to happen? Now, he's already negotiating. He says it will be at 145, which would be at the top of featherweight in UFC. Yeah. Connor, as late as 2015, twice fought at featherweight, 145. So could Connor get down? That would give Floyd yeah. some advantage if he could get Connor more down at his size, you know, wear him out before the But fight. here's the thing. Connor really, Connor probably walks around at about 175. I don't think he's that big. I don't. Floyd walks around at about 150. Okay. But going down, Connor makes that weight. When he rehydrates and put food mm -hmm. back in the system, he's going to be 160, 165. All right. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, right? Man, go ahead on with that like, antiquated huh? analogy. Ain't nobody no bigger than hard. Huh? I know, Skip, you know what? You need to stop. Yep. Here's the thing. Floyd Mayweather has spent two decades mm -hmm. trying to avoid the big shots, mm -hmm. and he's done a great job of that. But the, the two decades that he spent inside that, that square yeah. of avoiding the big shot can be undone mm. in a matter of minutes in the octagon. You know that, I know that. Yeah, but what a great exclamation point. He don't need no... Square. Yes, he does. This would be it. This would be the final stamp on his greatness. Let me ask you a question. I even went into the UFC, into the oct octagon, and I beat their best at his best. How about this here? What could Jordan have done after the walk-off, after he hit the poles? 
How did that work out for him in Washington? <laughs> okay. Okay, then. He took off three years. Okay. okay. Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather, for his 50th win, mm -hmm. he knocked the guy out who Skip Bader said was the baddest man on the planet. Mm -hmm. So how do you top that? Well, it was, you, you go take him on on his room. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Why not? Because, Skip, you know he can't win. Do, it, it, Skip, look at me. Look, I, I want to ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want him to get punished that bad that you you know how it was going to end? You want, Skip, I'll give you a thousand bucks. I'm intrigued. Bucks. No, you're not intrigued. That great? He's the greatest defensive fighter ever, so defensive why wouldn't I give boxer, him a chance? Boxer. Well, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. Let's see if he can no, pull it off. No, it's elbow to elbow, Maybe it's knee to knee, it's shin to shin. There are a lot of other things. Skip, he's never taking anyone down. He's never, he's... I told you what happened. Eye to eye, he looked into the eye in the ring, not the octagon, but in the ring, he looked into Conor McGregor's eyes and down into his soul, and he knew right away, I'm superior to him as a competitor. That's what he thinks. In the boxing ring, yeah. okay. yes. Yes. But that's a whole different animal. Mm. In his skip, he's a different animal in that octagon. Floyd cannot beat Conor McGregor. No sane, rational, prudent thinking person will ever think that Conor McGregor would lose a UFC fight to Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. I know Dana says it's fighting. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. If you take the 20th ranked featherweight and put Floyd Mayweather in there with him, they would run through him. When has Floyd Money Mayweather ever been sane and rational when it came to money? Skip, he just made half a billion dollars in the last two years. If you want to make money, there's Terrence Crawford. There's Spence Jr. Nobody, Come on, fight Ke cares. Keith Thurman. Nobody's watching. No payday. This will be the biggest payday in sports history. You know it, and I know it. He made... An estimated three hundred million yes. to fight Connor in a boxing ring, and now he'd make it, it's easily double that. It could be more than double that to fight him in the octagon. UFC is where it's at. I remember when Mike Tyson was at the height of his career, and he was fighting, making twenty five, thirty million dollars, and he was running through people in thirty seconds. And I had my homeboys like, man, I'll take an ass cut for thirty seconds. No, not that, because those guys are used to taking punches, mm -hmm. so they know how to take a punch. Mike Tyson hit you like that. Michael you, Spinks, ask him. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Floyd has never been kneed unconscious. He's never been elbowed unconscious. Mm. He's never been knocked unconscious. Skip, this is a different, this is a different set of animals mm. in there. Mm. Floyd is addicted to the spotlight, and lately, even though he gets his cameo shots in the front row of basketball games, he's been way out of the spotlight. He's That's aging. okay. Yeah, he's aging, and he's he's missing it. He's addicted to it, and this would be the brightest international spotlight he has ever been in. This would be an international event. It, it would. It, it, this would be happening. This would be the biggest sports happening ever. Maybe for some of the wrong reasons. I don't know, but this would you be know international be, because the, the the majority of the because here the thing is when you buy something they don't care why you buy it is that you bought it. But we know the majority of the people that would purchase this fight, are they're, pur they're purchasing this fight because they want to see Floyd get ran through. You know that. I know that's why you. That's why you over there key, key, key. Don't be smirking. I would like to see it. I admit it. Yeah. What, what would you like to fair see? Fair is fair. Turnabout is fair play. What would you like to see? Floyd lose. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. Exactly. I, I don't want to see him exactly. get I don't want to see him get too hurt. Uh, oh, too that's, hurt. Yeah. Oh, oh, but but if he <laughs> but if he were to break a leg, he arm barb or submit him or something like that, almost choke him on if, if he lost a tooth, I'd be okay. I'd be okay. He for could real, get, for he real could get it replaced. He could go to the dentist the next day. I don't know. You do know. Huh? The fact that you over there talking about where well, I want him to get hurt a little bit. Yeah. I mean lose a tooth or something. <laughs> for real skill. You know good and well Floyd Mayweather has no business in the octagon. And if this fight were to happen, Floyd Mayweather would be 42 years of age before it happens. Skip, this is a young man. Sports is a young man's game. Mm -hmm. This is not Tom Brady where he's heavily protected. It's not the UFC don't make accommodation where if the guy's like in his late 30s, early 40s, you can't kick, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. It's everything goes for everybody within mm -hmm. the rules, Skip. Yep. Floyd, is ne Floyd does not have expertise outside of boxing, and the sport is too far advanced. Ask Ronda Rousey what happens when you're a one-dimensional fighter. Mm 
Mm. And all these women can do other things besides just stand there, stand there and strike with you. I know, but she's not a striker, right? So she winds up against a striker and she gets struck. Yeah, but these you, are both strikers. These are both fisticuff fighters, right? Ronda was Ronda was a, a judo. So her thing was to try to get you on the floor in, and get you on the mat. A, about three seconds. Okay, what happened when she good couldn't get people on the floor? That's Holly Holmes, what what what? Picked her piece. To and then yeah. Amanda Nunez, when right. she was sitting on there, she said it. Now, I was, she was gonna run through her. That was ran ugly. through her. She did. It was hard to watch. So Floyd is a is a is a is a okay, let's say he's a striker. Floyd yep. is a boxer. Mm-hmm. Floyd is a defensive fighter. Yeah. But how many defensive fighters? When is your last time you heard somebody say in the UFC, oh, he's a defensive fighter? Yeah, I'm they don't sure say somebody that. said it somewhere. No, I ain't heard him. Yeah, you see, you know, <laughs> you know good and well. Well, we're yep. going to get, I tell you what, we'll get Kenny Florian or we'll get Woodley, see, one it, of these it, guys to come out here. That's why UFC became more popular in boxing because you can't get away with what Floyd has gotten away yeah. with for like 20 years in boxing, yeah. which is run, 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 duck, 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 duck. Well, that's boxing. The, uh, the, uh, the, the objective is skip, skip is to hit and not get hit. Mm-hmm. And he's done a great job. It's a science. That sweet, sweet science. Yeah. Congrats to Ronda Rousey, by, by the way. Big WrestleMania win. Yeah, yeah where, she's, where she's supposed to be. Because mm. them women, they weren't playing. Well, next, Floyd could wrestle. Yeah. After he loses to Connery, he First of all, to... they might. don't have little people wrestling anymore. They do. They, they when, do. They had, when they had the Haiti kid, you remember the Haiti kid? The, you remember wrestling? I don't. I do. I'm sorry, Haiti. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But no. Oh, Ronda was impressive. Floyd, 147 pound wrestler. Mm. Really, Skip? Yeah. Well, let's find somebody to wrestle him. Who? I don't know. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now you want to wrestle him. Next I'll up. Too big for him, the Eagles oh, are the defending champs and added Michael Bennett, Haloti Nada, and Mike Wallace to their already sacked roster, but not everyone is a fan of the moves. ESPN's Mike Sando wrote the Eagles might have sacrificed glue guys. For big names this offseason, and an anonymous NFL executive told him, quote, it is hard to microwave a team. Shannon, does the exec have a point? No, he has no point. Skip, the move that they're making, even last year, when they made these moves, why are they signing LeGarrette Blunt? If he rushed for 18 touchdowns and 1,000 yards and the Patriots doesn't want, don't want him, mm-hmm. that should tell you something. Mm. Bill Belichick num- normally doesn't get rid of guys that he wants to keep. Looks mm. like a good idea. Mm. They trade for Jay Ajayi. Why would you trade for Jay Ajayi? Looks like a great idea. Mm. Why are they trading for Nick Foles? Very good idea. Skip, if you look at the guys that they brought in, mm. okay, they bring in uh, Michael Bennett for, Vinny Cur- for uh, Curry. Skip, but then you look at it, it's salary for salary. They believe that at this juncture of their careers, Michael Bennett is a better player than Curry. Okay. Same, same cap hit. Uh, they bring in Haloti Nada. They're not getting the Haloti Nada that was in Baltimore, but he was cheaper than the guy that they let go that signed for five, three years, $15 million going to the Bucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Titans. I think he went to the Titans. Yep. I think he went to the yep. Titans. So when you look at it like, from that standpoint, Mike Wallace, Torrey Smith, they save a million dollars. I believe Mike Wallace can give you every bit of the value, if not more, than what Torrey Smith. They made it seem like they brought in Dominican Sue. They made it seem like they signed Allen Robinson. The, the only thing is, is that we know Michael Bennett before his outspokenness, but he's a very good football player. Mm-hmm. He's gone to three Pro Bowls, mm. and the thing that made the Eagles successful was their depth. Their depth. They lost the Hall of Fame tackle. Big V fills in. They, they, they lose a guy, their quarterback, that I thought was going to be the MVP. Nick Foles fills in. And he was the MVP. And then they have a rotation. Defensive, from a defensive line perspective, Skip, they are a rotational team. So they, 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 they average probably around 35, 40 plays. So everybody's playing all out every single play. So no one has to worry about getting worn down. So I don't really see the problem. I get what they try to do. I, you know, Michael Bennett, that personality. How is he going to mesh in the locker room? Hmm. I, I think they'll be just fine. Hmm. I like what the Eagles done. You never know how it's going to work out, Skip, hmm. because everybody thought the Patriots, because of what they did after they won the Super Bowl, they signed Gillisley. They signed uh, the best free agent or uh, corner that was on the market, and everybody says they're going to go undefeated. Can not nobody beat them? And a funny thing happens on the way. So you never know. Mm. But I like the moves that they've made. They didn't really upset anything by doing what they did. Mm-hmm. Yet. 
when Bill Belichick goes out and gets somebody who's difficult to coach, it's only one somebody because all the rest of the roster is not difficult to coach because it knows and has been taught the Patriot way. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So they hope that the one tough-to-coach player figures out how to be a pro inside this locker room at least for a little while until they can get the most use out of him. And then if they have to jettison and go on to another tough-to-coach player, they will. But they only have usually one at a time. Right. And all of a sudden, this is very interesting to me because the, the quotes on ESPN from the NFL execs and insiders, anonymous quotes, but they opened my eyes because to me, football, as you well know, especially pro football, is the ultimate unity team, you know, sort of chemistry game. Yeah. You, you have to have all for one, one for all, yeah. right? Yes. And you can't have too many outlandish personalities who won't be all for one. So all of a sudden, they're just adding one after another, and they got away with LeGarrette and Jay Ajayi, who they, they can be a little difficult in their own ways. That's why Jay Ajayi is no longer your Miami Dolphin. And LeGarrette could be a little difficult, but they got away with it because he was the only difficult-to-coach player they had, and when it was time to play, he would come up big in big playoff games. So good for him. So now you have two running backs who can be difficult, and all of a sudden you bring in Michael Bennett into a rotation that had what, what the insider calls integral role-playing glue guys in Vinny Curry and Bo Allen, and nobody even knows who Bo Allen is, but they loved him, and he right. fit, and he right. did little big things for right. the rotation. And he did his part. He, As Bill Belichick would say, he did his job quietly. Correct. And all of a sudden, Michael Bennett's not quiet. And you know what? Mike Wallace is not quiet. And you bring him in on, on top of Alshon, and all of a sudden they might be vying for balls, and it might it, it starts to get a little dicey. Get open. Huh? That's who's going to get the ball. Okay. Get open. You know? And the thing is, you bring in a loading nada to run the rotation with Fletcher Cox and yep. Timmy Jernigan. Huh. So now he fits in. You're not going to depend on Haloti to play heavy minutes. Mm. Now you got a great rotation. You got Barnett. You got Graham. Mm -hmm. You got Bennett. So now you got that rotation and you just keep them fresh. You keep them rolling. I don't have a problem with what they do. Now they're going to get back Sidney Jones. Mm. Remember, Skip, he was projected as a first-round pick. Was? He tore his Achilles. He goes in the second round. So mm -hmm. they get him back, although they lost uh, uh, Robertson, who mm -hmm. went to, I think he went to uh, the Saints. He did? Patrick Robertson. So I, I, I like what they've done. I like it because they're not – now, if you're talking about the Rams, not with – I can see if they signed Sammy Watkins. I can see if they got in Dominican Sue. Now you make a legitimate point, Skip. Mm. But now they didn't get any of those guys. Mike Wallace, I believe, can be every bit of the deep threat, if not better, mm. than Torrey Smith at a million bucks cheaper. Mm. I believe Michael Bennett is a better player than Curry. They have the same cap number. Mm. So I don't really see the problem. Granted, his personality, but I, I don't think... The one thing that I noticed that when guys go to different teams, they try their very best to pl to blend in, mm -hmm. so he will be on his best behavior. He's still going to be active in the community. So will Malcolm Jenkins. Mm. So will Chris Long. Mm. So, and all these mm. anonymous, we're we talking about a lot of anonymous. I guess none of them was watching the Masters yesterday. Mm. They had time to call people. Mm. Give up these crazy ideas. Oh, so, so it was just yet. I don't think it happened just yet. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. That's bad. okay. But the point is, every once in a while in the NFL, you can have too much of a good thing because all of a sudden, Howie Roseman, who built a Super Bowl champion last yeah. year, said, wait a second, I could get Michael Bennett? Oh, wait, I could add Mike Wallace? That's what they call him. Oh. Howard the Builder. Do they call That's him? what they call him, Howard the Builder. Really? Yeah. You what realize, they call Will McClay. You, you realize Howie Roseman didn't even play high school football? So, I don't get it. He didn't even, I don't know how he could know how to build a championship team if he didn't even play high school A lot of people ain't build anything growing up. Really? Great architect. Huh, Think really? For, Frank Lloyd Wright built houses as a kid? No. Well, he probably wanted to. Yeah, right? yeah, okay, yes. well, how he wanted to build a team growing up. Did he? And how he put that thing together. Okay. Well, put it together, how we do it again. How we the builder. Yeah, how we the builder. So, <laughs> how he got a little carried away with his new celebrity, and he said, wait, I could get him, and I could get him. And all of a sudden, as the executive said anonymously, while he Cowboys. wasn't watching the Masters or whatever he's Cowboys doing, he exactly. said, it is hard to microwave a team. And it is. If you just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and hope it sticks, and then it all comes off the wall and you try to glob it all together and put it in the microwave. No, it, no, it, no, it no that's not how microwave. That, no, 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 Joy. Yep. When you try to microwave something, yep. it's already been cooked. All you need to do is just, like, reheat it. Uh, so they already got that Super Bowl. Yep. So all they're doing is putting a, little few, a few more pieces in there, Skip, yep. and it's ready to go.
You know, and so you got all of these outsized personalities, all these outspoken new players, and all of a sudden, on top of this, you have a quarterback quandary. And you have it ain't no quarterback Foles who came out of nowhere to play the greatest quarterback in the postseason we've ever seen. He was a Super Bowl Excuse MVP. You, stop, stop. Well, I'm stop. How, how do you, you try, not you start trying it? To do it? You're trying to do it. You know what? There is no quarterback quandary. There is no conundrum. You know there is no uh, 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 dilemma. You know what? Michael Bennett will watch one game of Carson Wentz, as in W-I-N-C-E, and say, ooh, wait a second. I watched that, that Nick Foles on TV. He was really – he's better than this guy, and Michael Bennett will not zip it up, man. Skip. He Stop. won't zip it. This, he will just tell the media after game one, oh, why don't we go back to Nick Foles? First you of know all, it, and I know first it. First of all. It's what Michael Bennett does. In the quarterback situation, mm-hmm. this is not a dilemma. Yep. Merriam Webster described <laughs> dilemma. Two equally perplexing situations. Oh, one was I the did second not know that. one was the second pick in the draft, yep. and we gave it King's ransom. No, I said we joy. Yep. I mean, that might be my team moving yep. forward. But anyway, Maybe. the Eagles gave it a King's ransom to get him. Mm. They he's fulfilled. He's making it seem like, you know what, guys? Mm. You guys did the right thing. Mm. Nick Foles, if Carson Wentz is healthy. Come first game that Thursday night, mm. Nick Foles will be on that Microsoft Surface mm-hmm. looking at plays. Mm. You know that, I know that. Mm. And that was a Cowboy exec that said it. It may have been. It may be wishful thinking on the part of my Dallas Cowboys, yeah. but it's like a lot of volatility no, it's in not. that Eagle locker no, it's room not. now. Yep. No, it's not. And by the way, their secondary was suspect already, and then you lose your best corner in New Orleans, but we, we get lost on that because – we fixate on Michael Bennett and Haloti Nada and Mike Wallace. Nah, wow. They're, they're the best corner. They're good. They're, they're going to be all right. Huh. You worry about the Cowboys. That Zach, you worry about your team, anonymous exec. Mm-hmm. My team just stayed exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. And you would stay exactly the same yeah. next year in 2018. Yeah, we'll see about that. Seven and nine, eight and eight. Yeah. Well, just give me health and eligibility. I'm good. What are y'all going to do about We're still up in the air about which team you're going to pick for the NFC. What are y'all going to do about Dez? Yeah. Yeah. What y'all gonna do about Dave? What y'all gonna do with Jason? Witten. Ow. Not Witten. Okay. What about Beasley? He'll bounce oh, back. Beasley. He'll bounce back. Oh, okay. We got new offense. We got a Dak friendly offense. What y'all, what y'all, what y'all gonna do about Otaco? Taco? Huh? Taco will rise and shine. You know, and Joy, a whole lot of Taco. Oh, if Taco get two yeah. sacks in the game, Taco's for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody yeah. At, at, at the Mexican. Yeah. Been the shop, nothing. That Taco Bell is going to ring. All he has. One time, one ring. taco. Yeah. One taco. Yeah. How 80,000 people going to eat one taco? I don't know. One sack yeah, the whole keep year. Keep talking. Keep talking. Oh, taco. Ooh, look at taco. Making them tacos in the preseason. Oh, really? taco. Ooh. Look at little cheese. Lord, you know, I said, man, you stop. It's a good celebration dance. Yeah, it's meant to be in Philly, but just for one cycle, one year. You go Eagles. You go Villanova. You go Sixers. And then it's over. Doug That's Peter, it. Doug Peters says, Doug Peterson said, get used to this. Yeah. This is going to be a normal occurrence. Oh, okay. Now what he said. It's easy for him to say. Now He's got he... a quarterback quandary. <laughs> no, he... Stop. How close is Johnny Manziel to being on an NFL team? We'll discuss that next. No mercy. Johnny Manziel continued his NFL comeback attempt on Saturday, playing in the developmental league known as the Spring League. Johnny completed nine of 15 passes for 83 yards and a touchdown. After that performance, Bleacher Report's Mike Freeman tweeted, the word I keep hearing from NFL execs is potential. They think Manziel's potential is off the charts. Shannon, do you agree? Hell no. Johnny Manziel has the potential to get you in trouble just like he got Cleveland in trouble. I've never seen anything like this, Skip. What this is is that execs wants to be, want to be right. Johnny was a first-round pick. If Johnny Manziel was a fourth or fifth-round pick, everybody would have jumped and gone. But I got to be right. And if Johnny were to come back, they get to say, see, I told you. He just needed to be in the right situation, have someone to cultivate him and put him in a system that he could flourish. Yep. It's hard for me to believe that you can watch a guy that hadn't played NFL football in two years go to a league that most of us have never heard of, playing with guys that may, may not have ever played in the NFL mm-hmm. or may never play in the NFL. Yep. And after one game, you can say his potential is off the chart. Potential means you haven't done anything yet. Johnny Manziel, one game in this league, and you got some NFL execs exec saying his talent is, I mean, his potential is off the charts. Mm-hmm. Ask Cleveland where they got them. Skip, he's an under. They make it seem like Johnny Manziel, Cam Newton. 
Cam Newton had talents that's off the chart. Six foot five, 250 pounds, running 4 5 40, could throw the ball 70 yards. Mm-hmm. That's potential off the chart. You're talking about a guy that's 5'11, mm-hmm. that his whole thing is playing off script. Basically, don't call a play, let him draw it up in the sand, and let's go make it play. Mm-hmm. His best years was playing with Mike Evans. Well, what did he do, Skip? Run around, throw the ball up, Mike Evans jump up and make a play. Yep. And for that, for, for, for an exec to say his potential is off the charts after watching this game, Skip, if it's in the, if it's in the preseason, let's just say it's the Hall of Fame game. Let's just say you see something in practice mm-hmm. against guys that gun, that's on an NFL roster that has the potential of making a team. Mm-hmm. Okay, man, Johnny looked like he's good. He looked like he's calmed down. He's playing more within the system. He still can make his plays outside the pocket, yep. but he's throwing the ball well from inside the pocket. But to watch this and to say his potential is off the chart, man, it's straight BS. I agree if they're talking about watching that spring league game, whatever, <laughs> in which he got sacked three times in the half that he played and, and made one rollout touchdown pass to somebody who probably won't make it in the NFL against DBs who probably won't make it in the NFL. Correct. I'm with you on that. I think what the Mike Freeman anonymous quotes refer back to is what the whole league came to think of Johnny ahead of his draft. And I was there. I was ahead of the curve on Johnny because the year before, I didn't like him. I loved him. And all of a sudden, everybody started coming around before the draft. And the great Mel Kuyper at ESPN, I'm going to remind you, in his final mock ahead of Johnny's draft, he had him going seventh to Tampa Bay. That would have changed some Tampa Bay history, right? Mm -hmm. Probably for the worse. But the point is, that's how much Mel came to think of a Johnny that early on he did not have, obviously, in his first round. And I used to go back and forth with Mel the year before. I said, boy, he's, he's a special kid. He's got magic about him. And I agree. He's 5'11". I think he measured 5'11 and 5'8s maybe. Mm-hmm. Huge hands for his height and huge feet for his height, which gave him incredible balance and elusivity, that the likes of which I haven't seen this side of Russell Wilson. Because mm-hmm. Russell Wilson is hard to get on the ground, and Johnny was hard to get on the ground. And I don't need to remind you the two games against Alabama, and, and I got Nick Saban. We had him on the show on ESPN, and I talked to him off camera about Johnny. He just raved about him. He said, I just don't know if he can stay healthy. If he can stay healthy at that size, running around the way he has to run around to make plays, then Saban said he's going to be a star in the National Football League. So everybody came around. All those ESPN ex-player analysts, starting with Ron Jaworski, they all came around and said, yeah, I'd take him in the first round. So it wasn't – a split decision that he would go in the first round. Everybody expected In fact, he actually fell farther than most people thought mm-hmm. all the way to Cleveland. And again, he texted Dow Loggins, who was then the quarterback coach of the Browns, and mm-hmm. said, let's wreck the league together. And Dow Loggins said, hey, Mr. Haslam, look, look at this. Down at the end of the table at the right. war room. Look, look at this. Look what Johnny just texted me. Haslam's choice. Thank you. Do, do it now. Because it was their second first yeah. round pick. Because Ray Farmer and Mike Patton like said no. no. They said no. Because like, unlike right. Johnny, Johnny said if they had done his ho- their homework, they yep. would have knew he wasn't the next an old guy. Yep. Well, they did. Ray Farmer and Mike Patton had done their homework. And lately, That's- Johnny has said, I didn't care about the X's and O's. And he never did under Cliff Kingsbury, who was his coordinator at yeah. Texas A&M before he went to Texas Tech in the Heisman year. Remember what happened? Yeah. Cliff Kingsbury, I did a whole piece on Johnny that I wrote for ESPN.com, and Cliff Kingsbury, excuse me, Cliff Kingsbury told me that I don't know how many times Johnny would come to the sideline and apologize to me. I'm sorry, and, and Cliff would say, you never have to apologize for scoring a touchdown. But they were, as you say, off script. Right. He was just making it up on the fly. And in college football, you could consistently get away with that. That is correct. Well, Let me tell you a guy that has potential that's off the chart. You might have heard about him. His name is Josh Gordon. He missed two games and he led the NFL in receiving. He gets suspended for nine games in his first game back. He goes over 100 yards. Mm -hmm. You saw flashes of what he could do last year. That's potential that's off the charts. Yeah. What, no, John? I mean, you, that's the NFL, but you saw it. Right. I saw a Hall of Fame arc. Thank I you. I saw one game against New England where they just couldn't defend him. They, they could put three people on him. They couldn't stop him. Whether it was like he had back-to-back 200-yard games yeah. or something, like he just went bonkers. Yeah, that's, that's 
d- potential you saw, <laughs> like like you, you actually saw it happen right. in the NFL. Right, It wasn't college potential, it's pro potential. Right, yeah. that's, that's potential yeah. off the chart. And by the way, uh, for about three or four months, just about a year ago, Josh Gordon and Johnny Manziel lived together in West Hollywood, not too far from here on the west side of Los Angeles, yeah. and guess what was going on there? Nothing good. Right. Yeah. So if you want to talk about potential off the t- charts, yeah. Okay, give me Josh Gordon, because mm. I've seen him do it in NFL situations. So we knew if he got his head straight, my only thing was, Skip, my only question about Josh was could he get his head straight? Because I've seen enough. You go for it, you miss two games, and you still lead the NFL in receiving yards, and you miss 10 games, and you come back out in your first game, you go over 100 yards. You know how many drug flame outs Josh had already yeah. suffered through? Thank you. Back to college. It just happened again and again and again and again and again and again. He's on about his seventh or eighth chance. But this is about, Skip, all mm-hmm. those guys that gave Johnny Manziel a first-round grade. Yeah. If he doesn't make it, that's on their resume. So if he makes it, has some salvageable career they go like see i told you he, he just he just those, those drugs and he just got into the wrong situation they want to be right yeah no i got it but i'm gonna say it one more time i said on television before the draft johnny has issues with alcohol and if they persist and they turn into bigger issues i am out i said it again and again before the draft and i was not aware he'd also had some drug issues starting at texas a m well, it's not going to work. You're going to have the pressure to live up to your draft status in right. Cleveland, and you're not going to like it there. And guess what happened? Bad stuff happened. Yeah. And he doesn't study to start with, and then he loves the nightlife, I think, more than he loves football. And now that he's about to lose football, he's saying all the right things because he is Eddie Haskell from the old Leave it to Beaver mm-hmm. show. When he's around the adults, he can really talk adult well. And yeah. he, he talks 10 years older than he is when he wants to. Then he acts 10 years younger than he is at night. Yeah, when yeah. he was in front of the, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Cleaver, he was, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, sure, Miss Cleaver. Yes, sir, and as soon as, they tur- and as soon as they turned it back, he was thumping Beaver's side to him. He head. was, you little squirt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So That's true. No, it's, that's, exa- that's Johnny Manziel. Exactly. I'm out. I don't trust him anymore. I'm sorry. I still like him personally, or I'm trying to like him personally. But they're all fools because this has turned into nothing but fool's gold. And I admire the fact he did get himself back in some kind of shape. And I'm sure he can go light it up in the spring league and throw some touch. They got another big, yeah. it's like a scrimmage actually, but it's coming up next Saturday. They'll do it again. Wow. And trust me, Johnny will throw a couple of touchdown passes and the internet will go wild. And maybe some NFL teams will say, hmm, maybe we should give it a shot. Because you know and I know they can't find enough quarterbacks. Nope. Nope. Not enough at nope. that position. You're exactly right. You know? And they'll give them as many chances as it need yep. to be proven right. Well, not all of them. But oh, my bad. They get you. No mercy. Vikings signed Kirk Cousins to a massive three-year deal last month for $84 million guaranteed. In the process, Case Keenum signed with the Broncos after leaving Minnesota to the NFC title game. One anonymous NFL executive was apparently not a fan of the move, saying the quarterback money is stupid. Kirk is a good player, but he cannot finish games. He couldn't do it at Michigan State, and he can't do it in the NFL. They might have been better keeping Keenum at a much lower price. We're joined by FS1 NFL analyst Ray Lewis. Welcome morning. Ray. Good morning. morning. Good to see you. Do you agree with the executive? Well, I, I agree. It's one thing. I think um, living this story out is another. And I think you have to be very careful with what they're doing with this situation, right? So you kind of, you can't buy team chemistry. You can't buy a, a, a togetherness of going through ups and downs. It's, it's impossible to buy it. And one of the biggest problems that people have is, you go out and you, you get this, oh, well, he's the next new thing. He's going to come in and he's going to change it around. But I think that's irrelevant when your locker room is secure. When you have a locker room that's, that's strong, 2000, we got Trent Diffel. Mm-hmm. We good. We good. Whether you think we're, we're not good, right? You look at the Minnesota Vikings on one, one game away yep. from you being remember, in the Super Bowl. They had the number one defense. The number one defense. Yep. So you got to come back, mm-hmm. and you, this me, you, you have to give him, I think, that opportunity to finish that out. Because what happens now is the locker room shifts. Hey, well, you know, should it happen? Should it not happen? Right? And then you, then you get into the facts of where we really get in trouble at. Because then you bring in an Irvis girl back, mm-hmm. and then he doesn't produce. Mm. So then you're sitting back saying, ah, 
I pay all this guy this money. You know, you, I, we sat in the same room where you heard this guy say, well, you know what, the offense is going to move faster, and we're going to do this. And, you know, Everett's Gerbach has a better arm than Trent Differ. Well, maybe. Was that the year after, after the Super Bowl? After the Super Bowl. Year, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. And yeah. even though they was one game away, same situation. So I'm, I'm just telling you, now we have to sit back and we have to watch how this plays out. Because if Kirk Cousins doesn't go win a Super Bowl, then he's no better than what Keenum at. Mm. And that's why I think I, that's why I think you have to be very careful with that. Well, unfortunately, Shug, I'm gonna have to disagree with you. I'm gonna have to disagree with you and this anonymous exec. Mm. Because here's the thing: you try to gather as much information as you possibly can to make the best decision you possibly can. So, are you want to look at Kirk Cousins' three-year body of work, mm -hmm. or are you just going to take Case Keenum' 14 games body of work? Mm -hmm. Because they're quick to say, "Well, he couldn't win at Michigan. He couldn't win in the NFL." I know a guy that going into his 10th year, Matthew Stafford. He had no Sean Marino, AJ Green. He was the number one pick in the draft, and he couldn't win an uh, SEC title, and he has yet to win a division title. Mm -hmm. Case Keenum just won one. Okay, I get that. When I look at Kirk Cousins, I believe Kirk Cousins is a better upgrade, is an upgrade over Case Keenum because we're looking at 14 games. Prior to those 14 games, he was 24 touchdowns, 20 mm -hmm. interceptions. The, so, the, 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 the same thing, we sat in a room and we heard Brian Billick say the same thing about yes. Elvis Gerback, that his numbers are better, right. he's a better quarterback than Trent Diffel. Yeah. But we said... What, where I'm coming from, we said as a locker room, right. give me Trent. Right, but here's the thing. Wait, time out. We, you, you, were, you went back? No, no, I was, that was 2000, 2001. Okay, so I was there for okay, two right. yeah, yeah. So the year okay. after we won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, they tried to transition us to a different type of a team. We were a running team. They wanted to move us to mm -hmm. a passing team. So they were going to gradually move away from Jamal and put the ball in the quarterback's hands. They were thinking, mm. uh, uh, Brian and Ozzie's thinking, there's no way that defense can be that transcendent again. Mm -hmm. So we can't rely so much. We're going to have to be able to throw the football. They're saying, hold on, wait a minute. We got Stephon Diggs. We got Thielen. We got Kyle Rudolph. Dalvin Cook's going to come back. We still got, mm, whoa, I, I, think, I think. What happened to the 01 Ravens? I don't remember. Yeah, we the 01 the Ravens, we, we went to the division around against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And, and Everett's girl back melted. We <laughs> turned the ball over too much. Yeah, three turnovers. I mean, and, I mean, we're in, we're, we win that game. We, I guarantee you, we go back and win another Super Bowl. Was that at Baltimore? At that was at Pittsburgh. At Pittsburgh. But we were, we, the thing was, we turned the ball over too much that year. And the thing was, Elvis, teams would blitz the first player. Normally, teams like to feel you out. Let's mm -hmm. see what you're going to run. They come out the gate blitzing. Because they know, like, if we get him once. The same we promise. Now, we was, not, we was delivered a promise that this is so much better. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, this, this situation I've seen before. Because he has to go win it. Right. Kirk Cousins has to go win it for him to be better than what Case Keenum The was. only difference I'll say this, Ray, is that Trent had a bigger body of work. Trent had gone to the Pro Bowl. Trent had started for six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Case Keenum has never really been a starter. So this is his first. Trent Dilfer was like the, like the fourth, fourth pick. pick in the draft. Yes. Yeah. So Trent had a, a bigger yeah. body of work than what Case Keenum but is by working By the time with. he got to you in 2000, he was low risk, low yes. reward. Where, yes. where you, you didn't ask him to do much, and his ego didn't dictate that he right. did mm -hmm. do too much. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Correct. Mm -hmm. He was a team right. player. Yeah. He was a team player. And, and that's what I'm talking about. It was the fit. Mm -hmm. The fit, like, like if, if you saw Case and what Minnesota and them was doing this past year, it's like they fit. They get it. And by the way, Trent played pretty well in that Super Bowl against the Giants, right? <sighs> no, we just needed him to make just well, didn't a Didn't he make a couple team. throws? Yeah, right he there? made a big throw to Brandon to uh, 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 Stokely. Stokely. Yeah, he yeah. did. The thing was, if we, listen. Well, I mean, I just remember. We played for two big, we played for a big play That's and it. not turn it over, and we let Ray and them do what they do. Right. That's all he had to do. Right. Okay. Got it. Right. I am so with Ray. I've been on this side from the start. You'll get I've frozen. told you from the start. He's Kurt Cousins. Kurt. Kirk. Kirk. He's Kurt Cousins. His record overall is 26-30-1 as the starter for the Washington Redskins. 1-6 against his arch-rival Dallas Cowboys. Those are the biggest games of the year. He's 1-6, and, and he's 0-4 and against the Cowboys at, at home. That's no good. Played one playoff game and lost it, albeit to Aaron Rodgers, but I'm with... With Ray on this, if you told me that Belichick had successfully pushed Brady out the back door and he wound up 
with Minnesota, I'd say, okay, good. That's mm -hmm. an upgrade because right. you could trust that. If you told me somehow Green Bay got sideways with Aaron Rodgers over money and traded him to Minnesota to an arch rival, I'd, I'd say, okay, good. Go with that. That's better than Case Keenum. But I just don't see – I'm with this executive – Kirk is a good player because he is a good player, but he cannot finish games. He couldn't do it at Michigan State, can't do it in the NFL. That's what I saw. Again, I told you, every time Dallas played Washington, I was good because I knew Kirk would throw it to us in the end, and he always did. But here's the so, thing really, is, you just paid him. Look at the money. Skip, 26 you, million, 28, and 30, Ray, all guaranteed. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty. You take away the top seven quarterbacks. Who can finish? If you take away Brady, you take away Breeze, you take away Roethlisberger and Aaron Rodgers, who, who's finishing games? Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson, and maybe you throw Cam. But who's finishing games? So you got 32 quarterbacks. You got really mm -hmm. five to seven that can finish. What about the rest of them? You, you better hope that Case Keenum can finish games because now you got him. Oh, but uh, yep. uh, Skip, if this was Nick Foles mm -hmm. that did what Case Keenum had done mm -hmm. and they wanted to stick with him, I could live with it because he has a larger body of work. He had been a starter. He had gone to the Pro Bowl. Yep. So we see this. What we've seen from Case Keenum, he's a backup who had a great 14-game stretch. But we, they also saw what happened in that championship game. Mm -hmm. They saw what happened. He fell apart. They had a seven-point lead. He didn't fall apart in the opening drive. It looked pretty great. And then what, what happened? How did Philly get back into the game? The yeah. best, yeah. Pick six. But yeah. the best defensive back on the Eagles picked it and ran Made it back, play, and yeah. he's now in New Orleans. Yeah. Right? Play, yeah. But they loaded. <clears throat> Howard the Builder. I trust Howard the Builder. The builder? If, if you think about the ending of this, yes. the next year, two, three, yes. we're looking for one ending from Kirk Cousins. Yeah, he got to win the Super Bowl. He got to win the Super yes, Bowl. Yes, there's no question about That's it. it. That, you know, there's no when you make right. When you give somebody a fully guarantee. 100%. $28 million a year. And it's, there's no roster bonus yeah. if you're on the roster this, or if you work out that. When you give somebody $28 million you're per done, year, man. fully You sacrifice your whole he team. He must. Right. Within those three years, take that team to a Super Bowl right. and win it. Yeah. No question. And as this pointed out, there are the three <clears throat> studs on defense all going to want their money. money? And yeah. at some point, they're going to be saying, really? It, but, but you know how to It changes the dynamics. Yeah. I'm, 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 from a money perspective, you know this. From a team perspective, keeping pieces together, it changes their perspective. If we make the decision back then yes. to bring Trent Dilfer back mm -hmm. and Priest Holmes back, mm -hmm. we go back to back. Well, I don't know if we could bring Priest back because he's going to get so much. He got so much more money to go to Kansas City, and that's what happens when you win. See, when you let, look at let's look at a chicken house. If, you, if those chickens laying good eggs, at some point in time, somebody's going to come off you enough money, they're going to have to go. I'm not looking at no chicken house. I'm but talking about Kirk Cousins. <laughs> but I, I get it, though, Ray, but you know what happens when you win. Right. Yeah, they, every, they everybody want to get paid. Absolutely. They want to get paid. Absolutely. Which is, why, I, which, which is why this investment for me, for a guy for a guy that has not won a Super Bowl, right. this investment for me is a risky investment yeah. for the Minnesota Vikings. But everything, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I make that investment as close as I was to the end to winning the Super Bowl. But what the they've Super done, Bowl. they've done a great job of signing a lot of these guys. Just that entire mm -hmm, D line mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. signed up. Uh, yep. that, that secondary is signed up. Now they're gonna have to make a make a decision on Bar. Yep. They're gonna have to make a decision on Diggs. Mm -hmm. But you know when you win, you can't keep everybody. You can't keep everybody. Somebody's gotta go. So you make this kind of investment. You got that D line. All those Pro Bowl players signed up. You got the back end signed up. Somebody's gonna go. It's just that's just how it works, Skip. Mm -hmm. And that we saw that would happen with Seattle. That's why Seattle got so upset with Pete Carroll. Not only did you risk that, now we get guys going other right. places, and we're never going to be the same again. Remember the night uh, that night before we played the Super Bowl, and I spoke to us at the Super Bowl, and I, what did I tell you? I said, it's never going to be like this again. Right. I say, players are going to leave, coaches are going to leave. Mm -hmm. So you, you better enjoy this moment. You better make sure you capitalize on it, because it's never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, they just gave 28 per year. Kurt understands. First cousin going to get it done. Hmm. If he, if they, if they gave him twenty eight million dollars a year, the best quarterback in the NFC is who? From your perspective, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And Kirk Cousins will beat Aaron Rodgers in the NFC Championship. <laughs> no. Joy laugh. I like right. That. So, so. You just made Joy but Aaron laugh. Rodgers about to get thirty. But, 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 but the point is, if he's not beating him in the NFC Championship, then what, what are we doing? Wait. You know why free agency work? It's not about being good. It's about being free. Being free. 
It yeah, has I mean, always you, been. You're worth what someone's willing to pay you. It's just that it's Kirk Cousins and he's yeah, getting paid a lot. So. Absolutely. He, he has to win it. What about after those defensive player of the years, you'd have been a free agent? Totally free. It didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. You like, right. Like, right. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen anyway. Shannon Sharp, who is the most overpaid football player in the history of the National Football League? You know it, and I know it. It's Kirk I don't know. He <laughs> You do money. know. 26, 28, and 30 guaranteed? Yeah. yeah. Oh, first cousin. Really? Shay, he got to win it. That's all I'm going to tell you. He's not going to give Shannon. you a cut of it just because you can Yeah, yeah, right. he got he to he win, gotta win he gotta, it. He got to win it. Skip, he rubs a lot of people the wrong way. You like that, rubbing the general manager's head. Skip, that rubbed a lot of people. That rubbed you the wrong it way. It did. Let the Back man, it up. Let him, let him have fun. If, mm. that, if you, you jumping on Kirk bandwagon, if Kirk don't win it, I want you to come in here with a Kirk, oh, jer- oh, be with a Kirk jersey on. He is Kirk. He'll jump right off that bandwagon. <laughs> Fasten he per- he per- you know, maybe it's because you're playing on gambling on uh, the Cavs and Sixers, so you yeah. need somebody to lend you some money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, right. no mercy. The Warriors are struggling big time heading into the playoffs. Golden State lost at home to the Pelicans on Saturday. They beat the lowly Suns last night, but they've now lost nine of their last 16. Steve Kerr has questioned the team's defense and their effort, and Steph Curry is still out with an MCL sprain and could miss the first round of the playoffs, but he was shooting before yesterday's game. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Jim Jackson. Welcome, Jim. What's Hello, up? Jim Jackson. Good morning. Kind of miss you guys a little bit. Can, yeah, you know what I mean? MIA on us, Jack. I don't know. Just mm. working. Foss making me earn that money. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem with that. Jim, how vulnerable are the Warriors right now? I mean, the question is, they're just bored. I mean, the hardest thing to do is when you had so much success is to fight human nature, which is complacency. I mean, because they won. I mean, they had motivation. Think about it. the first championship. It was where they're too young. They shouldn't be here. They didn't play against San Antonio. They didn't play against the Clippers. They got through a Cleveland team. They, they, they had motivation. And then when Cleveland beat them, they came back the next year. It was KD had to prove something. Golden State had to prove something because Cleveland beat them. So they had something to push them. I think this is where Steve Kerr comes in and has to dig into that, that, that box, that crate, Shannon, mm-hmm. uh, Phil Jackson, uh, Popovich, to figure out something that's going to motivate this team besides winning a championship, which should be ultimately. But even as professionals as, as Draymond and, and Steph and Clay um, are, and, and Kevin are, they're going to have to find something else that's going to motivate them to push them to really be able to concentrate. Because I tell you what, if, if they're, they have to play OKC in the first round, mm-hmm. for, forget about the physical part of that game. The mental aspect of what it's going to take for Golden State to win because of everything that revolves around KD and, and yes. um, Russell, is, and you're not ready, mentally mm-hmm. focused. Yep. I, you know, I'm not saying that they're going to lose, but it's going to be a different kind of challenge for this team this year. Agreed. Which is okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? It's, right. it's okay, but it, it's different when you win. you got to figure a, a different way to motivate yourself. They're very vulnerable because of Steph. They're not winning a title without Steph. Mm. And <clears throat> the thing is, is that when you look at it, if they mess around and they have to go AK, a, uh, OKC or Minnesota with that big lineup with Towns and Josh and, and uh, uh, Taj Gibson and mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler and Wiggins and, D- uh, and Dang, they go big at you. OKC come at you with Russ. Now, Russ is not going to have to chase Steph Curry. So all his energy mm-hmm. will be, be on, on offense. offensive end. Yeah, definitely. They're very vulnerable right now. Hmm. Because you remember last year, Skip, they were 12-0. and 0. They were never even challenged on their way to the final. Nope. 12-0. and 0. They will not be 12-0 and 0 going to this final. They're going to have a lot of dents in that armor mm-hmm. if they were to make it. Hmm. But without Steph Curry, they are hmm. very, very vulnerable. Hmm. And they will not. Hmm. win a title without Steph. Really? And, and you see what's been going on hmm. without old Steph Curry. Hmm. Old five, huh? Hmm. With old Steph, <laughs> five and nine without old Steph. <laughs> five and nine without old Steph. <laughs> the best player on the planet. Hmm. Got his pockets picked twice by True Holiday and Ray John Rondo at the end of the game. He did? Because the best, he wasn't what playing. What did he score in that game? 41 with 10 rebounds? Uh, uh, Joy, oh, I, Joy, Joy, where did he come? <laughs> My restaurant, I served him up. <laughs> 
Mm. I served him up on hold top up, of that. Hold on, what, what is that? You know, that ain't that. I, you, well, well, I keep the napkin on there to keep it's, that smell down. It's ginger. <laughs> I, I know it is. I know it is. Keep that smell, keep that smell I, down. Dana White brought him that, 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 that what is that, Hennessy you got? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still ain't been open. Yeah, I, done yeah. pop, I done popped that several yeah. times. Oh, yeah. you body bag, nurk it, hmm. gonna get me something. So I'll go this far. In the finals, Golden State will have a hard time with the Sixers. I will agree with you on oh. that. Oh, you better go now. you going back there. We're going back with that. We're talking about them. I just want to see. What? See if you're paying attention. Yeah, we're paying attention. <laughs> Six is in the finals. Spot. I'm with Jim Jackson. Golden State is just bored. Maybe Golden State's a little gun shy because they've had so many injuries yeah. of everybody else that could challenge LeBron along the super highway to the finals. But it's it's been over for so long because Houston just pulled away and it was over. And Portland is no threat to come up from behind. So they're just sitting there treading water. Mm-hmm waiting for are we there yet to be over because when it's over they'll start to play and that seven foot monster he is a monster and every look they had one game where they they had a chip on their shoulder one game the seven foot monster got challenged it was not too long ago on april 3rd in oklahoma city remember what happened that Mm -hmm. night 34 and 10 happened from that seven foot monster named kevin durant against his old co-star Russell Westbrook, who also had a monster night, yeah. but it wasn't enough to overcome the monster who is Kevin Durant. But that's your team. You yeah. say you like them. Well, I'm just uh, I'm with Jim on that. Boy, if they clash head on, if they run headlong into each other in the first round, who you look got? out. I'd still have to be slight on Golden State just because I still think they're the favorite to win it all. Mm-hmm. Because even without Steph Curry, it would be some theater. Know. This is one I, I might would take. OK, you may take a, uh, and if, without wait. Steph. Well, no, wait, yeah, okay, here's the thing, too. Isn't it ironic, too, that now this team, we've seen this in the past with, let's say, a San Antonio team mm-hmm. that gave up home court advantage right. because they figured once they get into the playoffs, we'll figure out, even the Cavs from the perspective of LeBron mm-hmm. not holding serve to home court because you had a team in front of you that was more determined to show that they needed to have number one, the number one seed. So right. you got Houston right now on that same track to kind of prove, because James Harden, I think this is huge for James Harden yeah. and Chris Paul and even Mike D'Antoni from that perspective this year to prove all of the it, to, together they can beat a mm-hmm. Golden State team. So mm. I think in the long run, I think it helps this Golden State team because they have to deal with injuries, mm-hmm. which they hadn't had to deal with before. Mm-hmm. How do you deal through that adversity? How mm-hmm. do you um, navigate through not having a full line right. mm-hmm. and a full repertoire? So if you go into OKC against Russ, yep. I mean, and without a healthy Steph. And we've seen the pace of play is so much different. And I tell you, with Steph, and Katie is so good. But that pace of play, you go from first with Golden State when Steph is playing the 14th when he's out. Right. But you can see it in the lineup. Mm. You can see how they play. That Steph gives you that push, and without I that got push, it, obviously. Yeah. you go yeah. forced to play half court okay, but situations. Even without Steph, so you got KD mm-hmm. and Clay and Draymond. Have you looked at the depth on this team lately? And again, they're all bored. They don't come to play every night. Wayne Cook is playing exceptionally He's play- well. Okay, playing. but Great. look at this: Iguodala, Sean Livingston, Javale, Nick Hurt, Young, Hurt. David West. Kevon Looney and those two kids, Jordan Bell and Damian Jones from Vanderbilt University, they can play. You know they can play, and I know. And, boy, they come in waves, and they do share the ball, and I love their system, and it's hard to bet. A highly motivated Russ in the first round against the Golden State Warriors. He'd be a terror. 35-point triple-double a night. Okay. Take them down. Yeah, how much do we want to put on them? Whatever you – I know, well, that was your team. I know, but I didn't say – if they run headlong into that team, I got to go with that team. You I, I like them against everybody else. Okay, see? Yeah. But if they – first round with no Steph, that would be a I, battle. Yeah. yeah. I got I got OKC. Okay, yeah. You got OKC? Okay, yeah. You know, one thing, one thing I will say is that people try to, to mimic over the years the Golden State Warriors and how we're going to manipulate the lineup. Mm-hmm. But I think the issue you have is that Golden State has seven, eight, nine high IQ players. They do. Which allows you now when you go into your second unit – it doesn't drop off as but maybe the talent Iggy drops off. Livingston. But right here it doesn't. A lot right. of teams can't go that deep right. into the high IQ I out of category. And that's where I give Golden State the Damn. edge, even with the step out, that those guys still understand how to play. That pressure ain't there. You never yeah. relax with Steph Curry's on the court. No, that's true. Mm. That's true. You just don't want to see Golden State knock the king out again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Again. We were give him another loss. We we it's like not fair. They should just call it off. Yeah. 
the thing with LeBron James, mm. we don't worry about the bridge until we, we get to it. We, we, we. Oh, then we got to worry about it. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back again tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one.